Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. This is special right triangles. Now, of course, when you look at the list of what's been in this video series, we've been talking about 45, 45, 90 triangles, 30, 60, 90 triangles. I've given you some problem sets and try to figure out missing parts of those kinds of triangles. And now we're at a self quiz. This self quiz, I'm going to give you um, four problems to try. And uh, as always, pause the video, try it on paper first, and then we'll work it out. All right, a little reminder of what kind of triangles we're talking about here. A 45, 45, 90 triangle comes from a square. If you divide a square evenly in half diagonally, now we have 45, 45, and 90 degree angles. Now the relationship there, based on Pythagorean theorem, and just basically what kind of shape it is, is that the legs are congruent to each other, for example, 10 and 10, the hypotenuse is radical 2 times longer, so we attach a radical 2 to it. All right, so knowing that, we should be able to figure out parts of that kind of triangle. The other kind is called a 30, 60, 90, and we start with an equilateral triangle like this, split it in half with a, um, a height there, a perpendicular line there, and then we split that angle so it's a 30 degree, 60 degree, and 90 degree triangle. Now the idea there is that the short leg is half the hypotenuse. So if you know the short leg, you double it to get the hypotenuse and you attach a radical three to it to get the long leg. And again, this is based on the relationship, relative sizes of these uh, sides and the fact that the Pythagorean theorem can be used to find these missing sides also. Um, conversely, if you take the hypotenuse, you can take half of it to find the short leg and then attach a radical 3 to it, as you can see in that example there. All right, let's try a couple of problems here at a time and take a look at the measurement here and what kind of triangle it is. And you're going to be solving for x and y on number 1 and a and b on number 2. All right, focusing in on number one here, notice that the leg, one of the legs, is indicated to be 9 radical 2 over 2, which is kind of a strange looking amount. But uh, remember that with this kind of a triangle, 45, 45, 90, y would be the other leg, and it happens to be the same. So we've got two congruent legs. That was pretty easy. And then we have to multiply that by radical 2 because the x hypotenuse is radical 2 times larger. So it's going to take a little bit of uh, multiplication here. Let's see what happens. We're going to multiply this by radical 2. And remember that um, if I have radical 2 times radical 2, the result is 2. What really happens there is radical 2 times radical 2 is radical 4. And that's the square root of 4. And we know that that value is 2. So 9 times 2, of course, on the top and 2 on the bottom and that gives me my answer of 9. Alright, now there's a shortcut there and see if you can kind of figure that out. Number 2, A and B are the legs, the hypotenuse is 12. Alright, so how do we get our answers of radical 2 and radical 2? Well, the hypotenuse is radical 2 times larger than the legs, so we're going to divide by radical 2. Now when we work with these radicals, remember that we have to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. And so we're going to multiply top and bottom by the same radical. In other words, we get rid of the radical in the denominator. So that's going to give us 2 radical 2 over radical 4. And as I said before on the previous problem, that cancels the radical out. All right. Notice now that these factors of 2 cancel out, leaving me with these two answers for the legs. All right, 45, 45, 90. Next, 3 and 4 are um, 30, 60, 90 triangles, as you can see how I've um, marked these. Now, you are going to be solving for n and m on number 3 and x and y on number 4. Go ahead. All 
Number three, the long leg, as you can see by the diagram, is three radical three. Now, as I said before, the long leg is radical three times longer than the short leg. All right, let's solve for n first. So if it's longer, radical three times longer, we're going to divide by radical three to figure out the short leg, which of course is why n would be just three. And then knowing that's the short leg, we double it to get the hypotenuse which is six. All right, pretty easy there. Number four, the hypotenuse, now be careful, make sure you're looking at the hypotenuse there, is three. So first of all, we're gonna take half of that and get the short leg y, which is three halves. Now if you wrote 1.5, that's fine, same thing. Um, normally when we're working with radicals, a lot of times we leave our answers in fraction form, simplified fraction form, so that's okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and just attach a radical three to that because the long leg is x. So that's why it's three radical three over two. All right, if you think this video helped, please share it with other people or send me some feedback in comments. And I appreciate you subscribe too if you think that these are the kind of videos that would help you a lot. All right, take care. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.